The Pharmacy on Today, sponsored by Boots. No, we are so looking forward to heading away on our yeah. summer holidays this year. Now, it's, uh, for a lot of people, it's really been a long time since we travelled anywhere outside the country. So we're, we have a bit of a refresher course for you today. Our pharmacist, Donal O'Sullivan, joins us now. And he's got some timely advice. And I suppose advice as we're travelling when it comes to medicines and different mm -hmm. things as well. Donald, great to have you with us. Thank you. So really, it is a time that we should think about what we're going to bring, I suppose. And we might, it's been a while, as we were saying there, since people have travelled. Yeah. So a lot of people would bring... Uh, relief for pain, temperature mara, mm -hmm. you could heartburn, hay fever, yeah. nausea, vomiting, rehydration sashes, mm -hmm. insect repellent, creams to treat insect bites. Yeah. You could be bringing your sun lotions, your after suns, rehydration sashes, mm -hmm. and even... And a little kit that we have here. Yeah. Actually. So something like this, kit. you probably could fit most things into a little uh, first aid kit. So, so let's yeah. start, I suppose, with even rehydration sashes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people think, you, you know... Take, you can take so much sun and note yourself totally. as well. And you can get sunstroke yeah. very easily, especially yeah. with children and all that. Mm -hmm. You get those for both kids and adults, don't you, the rehydration sashes? Oh, the, 200 ml of... You could boil water, let it cool, Mara, mix 200 ml with one sachet, and then you have your salts at the correct isotonic mm -hmm. strength to be absorbed fast. And, and that would do for both children mm -hmm. and adults because they would come in certain flavours. Okay. Yeah, so, oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. I, I made a mistake a few years ago, Donald. I, I brought the first aid kit with me, yeah. mm. but it was a few years old. Right. And there, was, there were things inside that they were gone oh. off. And uh, so it's something maybe if you are going in this, because people right, haven't been away in a while away, to yeah, replenish point, yeah. what, what's are, in there. I would say, you, you probably see yourselves with Michal and Cal, and mm. I even see yeah. your own kids, even to bring in the car. Even for normal everyday use, a small handy for the aid kit is so yeah. you're always going to use plasters and dressings and... Yeah. Ice pack you know. as well. Ice pack, I mean, pack. you know, yeah. you could, you could, kids could get a bump on the head, that type of thing. And this one actually is, is good because you can bring this through because if you're not putting your case through, this is not a liquid and that's important as well. Yeah, no, m most people would just put that into the, in, into the suitcase any Mara and where that... Uh, cold pack can come in handy not just for injuries but if you had a sting... Mm -hmm. yeah. afterwards even to reduce the inflammation from a bee or a wasp sting or something yeah. like that, the, 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 that would be still handy. We should probably bring sprays as well. I always bring sprays for like mosquitoes and yeah. all that because you really will encounter a bite of, with, from some insect while you're away. Yeah, and they go, different people, their body odour, oh, yeah. they go for Mara and mm -hmm. some people have a, a genetic disposition that the, the mosquitoes can go for. And would you believe that if you would miss more carbon dioxide in your breath, mm -hmm. that that can attract... Mosquitoes my, more also. My so God almighty. I'm yeah. trying to study well, all these. What's interesting yeah. about mosquitoes as well is if you get a bite, some people get an insect bite and it yeah. won't affect them at all. Yeah, and other people are being And hospital. some people get yes. really bad. Like, I actually get really bad mosquito bites. It, not at the time, mm. but I find two or three days later. Yeah. Is there anything you can bring? Antiseptic creams? A lot of people in that case, Mara, they would use a mild cortisone cream mm -hmm. okay. twice a day on the area and they may even take an oral antihistamine. Yeah. Now, in some people's cases, they would have a severe allergic reaction and they may even have to bring adrenaline pens mm -hmm. around with them. In case they have anaphylaxis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. They know, but obviously, if, even for, we'll say, yourself now, it's, it's very easy, you know, if the antihistamine wasn't reducing the bite for you, you may have to go to your doctor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they even have to put people on oral steroids for insect bites, yeah. Mara. Oh God, they, they, have yeah. such, they have such a bad reaction yeah, to it. Yeah, they could have, mm -hmm. yeah, no, mm -hmm. it, it can happen like don't, that. Don't, when it comes to suntan lotion, again, like, I, I think we're yeah. all fairly okay when it comes to it, but I think, like, say, you have to lash on the 40 and the 50 the first few days, I think. Well, even the recommendations, the amount you put on, yeah. Dahi, if you're, if you're going to put it on your head, they say you should use about 10 mLs, and then for the body, maybe something about 30 mLs. Mm -hmm. That's approximately six teaspoons. And then if mm -hmm. you're somebody with a bigger surface area yeah. or a bit of hair, you mm -hmm. might need to use, mm -hmm. might need uh, to use more. Yeah. But the, like you said, the 50 plus is a good idea to, to use. Uh, you can't get enough protection. I think probably, as, as though I was saying, there are high factors so important, especially yes. when you live somewhere like Ireland yeah. and we don't get much sun. You really should cover yourself up. And people often get excited when they go to the sun. Yeah. They're like, I yes. want to get a tan. <laughs> what they do is they get a burn. It's and very dangerous get a burn. to get a burn, yeah. isn't it? And Mara would say, if you get, uh, would you, if you get sunburned, just once every two years, that can triple your chances of getting malignant melanoma. Triple it. So it's, yeah, triple it. So is it that high? Yeah, it's, it's so important to get... Yeah. Um, 
protection from the so sun. We, we were here, we were here last, on the last Friday yeah. show with Shane Lahan and we were talking about days going to the beach when we were younger yeah. and oh, yeah. putting on baby... You remember people put on baby oil and sure. stuff to get to get suntan lotions and everything? And you look back at that now and you go, oh my God, were you off your heads yeah. altogether? But that year when I started working in the, we had a family pharmacy at home in Carl Savine, mm -hmm. factor eight that was considered the high factor, eight. two was low no. and four and six were medium. <laughs> that was it, but eight, eight was high. You know, you were going high, I'm you were going with eight. It just shows you how we've changed, but I suppose oh, now changed, we yeah. realise how important it is and the dangers. So I yeah. suppose that'd be your first tip, would it? Make sure you keep putting on really high factor sun, sun lotion. Exactly, Mara, okay. put it on half an hour before going out in the, the sun and okay. then reapply it every yeah. hour and a half to two hours. Now, Don, if you're going to some place, maybe in Africa, you might have to get vaccinations. How, how long before should you get the vaccine before you go? A few weeks, is it? So you, you're better to have the consultation with your doctor. We'll say, mm. even on Boots.e, I, I, I read it 68 weeks, mm. but I think even before that mm. to be making your plans because mm. if there's trouble with the supply of the vaccines, to get the vaccines administered, then we'll say, the, even for them to act yeah. so much time. So you're better to do your research in time. So mm. go to your doctor and then some pharmacies, even like my own, we'd have a travel vaccination service where we can administer the vaccines on foot of the doctor's prescription. Yeah. And you'll know but, as well, if you go to the pharmacy, what countries yeah. require certain vaccines for, you know, like typhoid exactly. or different mm. things. And there are certain vaccines then that you only need to get every 10 years. So you can advise on that as well. We can because you would have a whole range of them all. If, if I start to listen to mm -hmm. cholera and diphtheria yeah. and hepatitis A and B, and there's a, there are a whole range of them anyway, and you get a lot of good information. You can get links from boots.ie or on the hse.ie, mm -hmm. and they will give you specific advice for the recommendations for different destinations. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I know people are very disappointed because they thought they could just rock up the day before yeah. and get the vaccine and then go yeah, on the plane, but no, a, it takes a while for them to get through the system. Yeah, a for big them, problem. Yeah. Yeah. For, them to, for them to kick in. Donald, just one thing of people again travelling through yeah. airports, if they are bringing liquid medicines, for example, yeah. for a child, mm -hmm. or you talked about antihistamines, an oral antihistamine, I remember having it always, and yeah. having a bit of hassle, yeah. you know, going through if I had it in my bag. Yeah. So are you as well to go to the doctor and get a note or get a note for the pharmacy to say that it's actually medicine? So if you go to your local pharmacy, we can mm -hmm. give you a list of the medicines that have been prescribed for you and we can stamp it and you might want to copy your prescription to bring with you. That's mm -hmm. a good idea also. And then just to check what are the recommendations from the mm -hmm. the 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 the, the, the airport that you're going to the airport yeah. that you're the yeah. carrier uh, just check what, what, what's being allowed or not. Yeah, and don't let, say, if you, say for example, if you bring your prescription say to Spain or Portugal, can you go into a pharmacy over there and hand it in? Um, under EU regulations, for example, when they come mm -hmm. here, uh, under certain cases, we'll say we we, we can, mm -hmm. but also bring your your there's a, the international you know the, the European, European Union yeah, card, card yeah, yeah. because. They might be able to prescribe medicines for you yeah. there, and depending on the country, you might get your doctor for free, and mm -hmm. you might get your yeah. your your medicines for free also. It's good mm -hmm. to know that. You're right, actually. Good, it's a yeah, good idea yeah. to do that if you haven't got one. Donald, thank you thank so you, much, Donald. and thanks great for being with us you. all season as well. It's been a pleasure thank as you always for to have me. you. It's thank brilliant. you. Always great to have you, Donald. And as Donald always says, if you do have health concerns, whether now or before your travel, always seek medical advice from your GP or your pharmacist. The pharmacy on today. Sponsored by Boots.